Praise the Lord. Morning, Iron Faith Fellowship. Morning. <clears throat> I am not Randy Scott. Uh, yeah, I'm positive. Although, no, I did see a bald eagle uh, fly across my path on my way in today, swear that is the truth. I, I can't control where the birds go, Aaron. <laughs> Amen. Truth. Uh, good morning, all. Pastor Manti here. Uh, humbled, as always, to be able to bring the word of the Lord because that is what we are here for, right? I don't know about you guys. I must say, I felt the Holy Spirit this morning in a way I have not in a long time here. <laughs> Praise you indeed, Father. Uh, so again, Randy is not feeling well, and he's just been really tired. I said, "Dude, take the little Selah, right? You know, go go take a siesta, and uh, we got it." So I mean, he knows that's a standing thing, but so I didn't know until about 22 hours ago that I was going to be speaking here today. Um, but that is okay. In fact, I kind of like it that way. In fact, I kind of really like it that way because. As Haas pointed out to me earlier, you're, you're the guy that really likes the time to prepare, right? And get the notes down and get the studying done and get all the stuff presented and the slides. I'm like, yeah. But he never lets me do that anymore. <laughs> okay, dokie. Here we go. Um, but, the, you know, the opposite side of that is, well, I feel all prepared, but then I overthink it all, and I get nervous, and, and, I'm, and I'm thinking, oh, is this the right thing to say, and is this really the message I, you're telling me? Am I telling this to myself? Or now you've got, hey, you got a couple hours, just make a note and go, yes, sir, all right, here we go. So not even slides. Aaron walks up to me and says, hey, you didn't tell me anything to put on the slides. I'm like, I know, I just found out. Don't worry, it's okay. So no slides, so you're actually going to have to use your Bibles. I'm sorry. But that's the way it's going to be. Um, Father, we love you. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for this glorious thing you call the church. And you will build your church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Elections shall not prevail against it. Rioters shall not prevail against it. The devil himself shall not prevail against it. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so I'm thinking, all right, Lord, you got me talking. What am I going to talk about? I really have no clue. What do you want to say? I wait about 10 seconds, and he says, you're going to call it the God of yeah, but. And I said, what? That sounds ridiculous, childish. No, that's right, though. He says, yeah, but. Yeah, but. I say that a lot. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. All right, let me tell you a story. How about that? Start with a story. This is a story of a man named Paul. Paul um, is an apostle. Paul goes where he is sent. For the gospel. No, I'm not talking about the Paul in the Bible. This is a friend of mine who in 2009, this happened to him. He said, Lord, I'm going to go where you send me. The Lord said, all right then. Uh, he's from Uganda, originally in Africa. He said, go north to South Sudan and preach the gospel. Yes, Lord, here I go. This Sudan, if you don't know, is, uh, has been a place of civil war and religious war for many years, and it's gotten very bad to be a Christian there, uh, to the point where they had broken up into two different countries. There used to just be Sudan. Now it's North and South Sudan. Um, so he crosses the border. First thing that happens, he's on a bus, crosses the border, he's arrested. Why are you here? Every, every missionary who comes through, they're very paranoid and they don't want those folks in the country right now. Thank you. So he's arrested. Uh, for some reason, they just let him go. 
All right, just don't, don't do the gospel here. Yeah, all right. So, of course, he continues to go where he's sent and goes to the capital city, the new capital city there in South Sudan. And he's arrested again. He hasn't done the gospel thing yet, okay? But this time they're serious. They put him in a cell because he's there for, as a missionary. That's right, that's what he was. <laughs> and you have a mission too. So, uh, yeah, now he's in jail. Uh, and he doesn't think he might not ever get out. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He's like, Lord, what in the world? Did I come here for this? I didn't even, I didn't even get anybody saved yet. Why am I in jail already? Uh, so, uh, what, who walks in the jail but the town prostitute? Everyone knows who she is. They all kind of snicker. Oh, why are you here? She goes to Paul and says, let that man out. I know him. And he's like, I don't know you. <laughs> I swear I don't know you. Uh, but the guards are snickering and like, yeah, okay, you know a lot of guys. Fine. Take him. She's like, oh, he'll come with me. He won't be in any trouble. Fine. So this prostitute who he's never seen before in his life takes him to her home, which and the word home is very different than our version of home. It's a bombed out shack with no ceiling. Um, and uh, what counts for a shower is a some running water in the back where everyone can see you in the town. <clears throat> so she said, go take a shower out there and, and come back in. Okay. <laughs> At this point, he's like, Lord, I really don't get this. <clears throat> so she sits him down, they talk, and she says, who are you and why are you here? Tells her. I'm here for Jesus, actually. She says, because, and he's, well, why'd you come get me? What is that about? She says, because for the last six months, a man in white has been visiting in me in my dreams, and he says, my name is Jesus, and you are going to get this man out of jail. And now he's like, boom, time to go. He says, I start preaching the gospel from Genesis to Revelation, and she's going to sit there and listen to the whole thing. And she stops him halfway. No, 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 just tell me how to be saved. I want to accept Christ right now. What do I do? And his first reaction was, yeah, but, 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 what, what, I'm not done yet. I didn't tell you the whole thing. I didn't say the whole story. I was just, 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 t just tell me how to be saved. <laughs> Tells her, leads through the prayer, confess your sins, repent at the cross, you're saved. She's so happy. Hang on one second, wait here. A couple minutes later, she comes back with another prostitute. Tell her what you told me. Okay, here we go. Here comes the whole story. No, no, no. I just want to be, I want to be saved. She repents. She's saved. Hold on. Wait a second. I got one more. Be right back. Goes out and pulls a gentleman in. Not a prostitute, as far as I remember from the story. Um, I think a brother of one of them. Forgive me, Paul. Uh, he comes in. Yeah. What they got, I want. I want to know God. I want to be saved right now. Free salvation. Because he listened. He had to go to jail. He had to get arrested. He had to be bailed out by a prostitute who, as far as he was concerned, he was going to die when he got to the house. Or God knows what. Three souls saved, and now he's like, okay, let's go out in the street. I'm going to start preaching uh, the gospel to anyone who will listen. This is obviously why I'm here. I'm going to bring in a huge harvest today. And as he's going out to the street corner, and he's getting ready, and he's got the whole thing rehearsed, right? He's been brought up in the charismatic church, right? He's got the whole program ready to go, right? Some of you are like, yeah. 
The whole thing ready to go. Now this is it. Lord God is preparing me for this moment. Here we go. And God speaks to him and says, I want you to leave right now. Go back to Uganda now. Whoa, but God, wait. Yeah, but uh, I, I only saved three guys, three souls. This is embarrassing. I heard stories about people who come to my church and they say how many dozens and hundreds of people and thousands of people they converted and they brought to the Lord and I only got three? Just go to Uganda now. And he says he kept fighting him. He's like, the Lord has never rebuked me before that time. He says, really, who do you think is the one who did this whole thing? Who do you think put you on that bus? Who do you think got you arrested? Who do you think brought you to that jail? Who do you think brought you out? Who do you think brought her to you? Who do you think did all that? Did you do that, Paul? No, Lord. That's right, no. So stop saying, yeah, but, and get your butt out. Amen. So he did. Think about that. That's one of my favorite stories of someone who I actually know. You know, you hear stories on YouTube or stories about this guy visiting, and I can verify this is the truth, guys. It's not something that's made up. Point is, number one, the book of Acts that we read about is happening today. The same stuff. Breaking out of jail, divine interventions, miraculous salvations, go where I tell you, and great things will happen. Nothing has changed. I think this is one of the reasons why, if we look at the world the last year here, a very tumultuous year, hasn't it been? Well, maybe it shouldn't be. We're told that he's going to shake everything that can be shaken. We're told that, hey, we're shown how to do church in the Bible. We don't need this stuff. It's nice to have a building, but there's nothing about that in there. So they went to their houses. They had small groups. And they went where they were told, and they had everything in common. None of them had need. All the stuff is taken care of that we stress and worry about every day. We don't have to do that if we're obedient. If we stop saying, yeah, but. Who is the God of yeah, but then? Because it's not the one that Paul is dealing with. My friend. By the way, how do I know Paul? How do I know this Ugandan uh, having adventures in Africa? Where did I come across this guy? I went to Israel in 2017, and he was my roommate on a tour. Again, yes, I always wanted to go, and this was a, you know, a, uh, one of the things on my bucket list, but you still needed the Lord to arrange the whole thing. I really did. And he set it up just perfectly. And I'm still to this day, friends, with all the people who I, well, darn near all the people who I was with on that tour. They're spread out everywhere. It's awesome. Uh, open up to Matthew 24. Please. Verse 10. <clears throat> I want to show you, like we said, we felt the Holy Spirit this morning, did we not? Amen? Show of hands. All right, praise God. Yes, yes, yes. He is here. He's here now. He's active. The Word of God is active and sharper than any two edged sword, dividing bone and marrow, soul and spirit. And He likes to do that. He likes to be alive and active. He's not a dead God. He's not a God of 2,000 years ago or 4,000 years ago. He's a God of right now, and he's the God of what's coming. So he told us what's coming. This is coming true now. Verse 10. Many will fall away, betray one another, and hate one another. 
And before we amen too much, the Lord is talking to the church, believers. Not the outsiders outside the camp, not the non-believers persecuting you. This is Christian on Christian hate. Many will fall away, betray one another, and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end shall be saved. Endures to the end of all that stuff. Hate, betrayal, falling away, false prophets, deception, lawlessness, hearts turning cold. Every one of those things is for us. The church. Of course lawlessness applies to pagans and the, the ones who hate God. No kidding. Of course their hearts are cold. That's why they need a heart transplant. Because we're given a heart of flesh, right? When we believe. A new heart. Amen. Praise God. But here's the thing, guys. Like everything else God does, He's not going to force the issue with you. He wants willing servants, willing followers, willing worshipers. Did He make you sing this morning? No. That's our call, our will, our act of love. It's showing our heart for Him. God, you're worthy of all this we're doing. You're worthy of playing up here. You're worthy of singing the roof off this place. I hope that continues, by the way. Well, this is the start of something that never stops here. But all these things apply to us. The cold-hearted, the hatred, the betrayal, the falling away from the faith. Let's be clear about that. It means falling away from Him. The one who endures to the end will be saved. I don't have to go to ancient history. I don't have to go to... I don't have to go anywhere. I can go to Wednesday and show you all those things. Four days ago. In the Capitol building. What, what belie- uh, is that a believer action? Or should the church have been uh, there? Was the church there? Were there believers there? Hmm. I think so. Uh, go flip over to Matthew chapter 12, please. 12 of Matthew, verse 34. We tend to, boy, we're just, something's never changed. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Nothing new under the sun. Um, the human condition is always one of, surely not I, Lord. Uh, Matthew twelve thirty four says... Except brood of vipers. Yeah, that's good. That's Jesus talking. How can you speak good things when you are evil? For the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. The mouth speaks of the overflow of the heart. The good man produces good things from the storeroom of good. The evil one produces evil things from his storeroom of evil. I tell you, in that day, the day of judgment, all will have to account for every careless word they speak. Some Bibles say idle words. Some say worthless words. I I, I personally, if you follow anything on social media with Iron Faith or myself, which I encourage you to, by the way, Facebook, Twitter, all that junk. I really don't enjoy it. I, I'm not, I have not chosen to do that, be that guy. God has directed me to do that. He said, we're not going to cede that ground to the enemy because you're going to need to be the voice of the Lord sometimes, even in the church. Social media is an excuse for believers 
to Babylon with profane, worthless, empty, idle, careless words. I'm not immune to it. I've done it. I've been rebuked for it. Sometimes my pastor will pull me aside. What are you doing, dude? Was that really necessary? Was that really necessary? Couldn't you put that a different way? Yeah. Yeah. I could have. That was a little careless. <laughs> and more. This is a theoretical lesson, guys. The Lord is talking to you right now with your words. If you are saved, if you are a child of God, act like it. Behave like it. All the time. Even when you think you're alone, he's watching you. And it's not to freak you out or make you paranoid. Thank God he's with us. He said he'll never leave us. That means even when you're in your little room where you think you can get away with stuff or on your phone in the corner, whatever the case, not happening. Everything's in the book. Everything. Pastor Haas says this fairly often when he's led to give a word. He'll always say, I know my day on the day of judgment, I'm going to be up there for a while. Clearing some things up with the Lord or him clearing them up with me. What exactly was that about? How about this time? What about that? What were you thinking here, son? No one's getting away with anything, guys. And again, what's the, 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 the natural reaction is the other guy. He means the other guy. That, those other people is who he's referring to. They are really going to get it. Huh. Mm hmm. But like we just read in Matthew 24, one of the signs of his coming is the church getting a cold heart. Yeah, but, who's the God of yeah, but? Yeah, but, I'm just so angry. I'm just so frustrated. I see all this bad stuff going on. I'm just, uh, everything makes me angry. Harry was over my house this week helping me out because he's awesome. Check my heater out. Of course, it was making a noise, and when he shows up, no noise. <laughs> Thanks a lot, heater. I look like an idiot. I have it on, I have it on film. I have, I've recorded it. Just, it's true. Anyway, Harry shows up. Bing, it's healed. The demon fled. I don't know what happened. Anyway, uh, he came out. I hope you don't mind me telling, Harry. Uh, he came, now that I called him out. Um... He came over and we're just, you know, shooting the breeze or whatever and, and just hanging out. And he's like, I can't watch the news anymore. I just get so frustrated and angry. I said, well, first of all, kudos to you for recognizing that and turning it off. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Better for you to enter heaven lame than to burn in hell with two good arms. That's the risk, friends. That's where we're at. But anyway, good job, Harry. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, and if, if that's happening with you and you can't deal with it, cut it off. Don't let your heart grow cold because of it. Don't start cursing out people just because you're frustrated. Yeah, there's evil in the world. Deal with it. We're born into it. If you have the chance to make it right, make it right. Be at peace with every man as much as possible. God, Jesus causes the division. We don't. If you, if you let him speak through, if you let him do his thing, I guarantee you there's people annoyed right now watching this. It's because the word of the Lord is doing that. I'm not doing that. The word of Chris Manti hasn't been said very much at all. I, don't, I hope not. The Lord will cut that. He'll be the division. You're not. You don't be the division. You'll be the healing. You bring the reconciliation. We have a ministry of reconciliation. That's the whole point of Jesus coming, dying on the cross, to reconcile the world to himself, whosoever will. So get serious about that. Yeah, but, but, 
I'm just so angry. It wasn't like this when Jesus was here or something. One of you may be saying that. I don't know. That's pretty silly. He says he knows every single thing. He's been through it. We don't have a high priest that doesn't know what it's like to be here. He knows every single temptation. He knows every emotion. He knows every pain. He knows. And yet, he didn't sin. We have to rely on him. If you say you have no sin, you are a liar. Correct. So let's apply that wisdom, right? Let's apply it. Rick this morning, uh, Elder Rick, you're praying as we do every week before service that the anointing of God would be here and with us. And he just said something very profound. He's like, he says, Lord, your word is empty without the application in our life. Really, it's a book, it's the words. Unless the Spirit gives us life, light, and fire to do the things that we're reading. Do them. You can't get away with it, all right? I'm so frustrated and angry. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, unfairness. But it's not fair. It's not right what's happening. It's not right. I'm going to go protest. And you, you all apply this where you need to, okay? I'm going to go protest and, and, and cause some trouble. These are my streets. There's injustice in my streets. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something about it. This is not fair. What's happening in this government? I'm going to go protest. And more than I'm going to go storm the Capitol. I'm going to burn it all down. It's my house. Turn to Habakkuk chapter 1. Habakkuk. Do you know where that is? <laughs> it's, it's one of the minor prophets. Okay, it's near the end of the Old Testament. Now, you don't have to get there if you can't find it. That's no problem. I got some pretty sharp folks in here. You know where this stuff is. My pages won't open, so I'll be embarrassed completely. There we go. All right, so it's on page 1,449 of your textbooks. Uh, it isn't mine. I don't know about yours. Habakkuk. How long, O Lord, must I call for help and you do not listen or cry out about violence and you do not save? Look at the violence in my, my land. You're not listening. Why do you force me to look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? How many of us have said that? That's our prayer probably 90% of the time nowadays. I don't care if you're on your left, or right, or center, or whatever. You're saying something like this. Why do you force me to look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Oppression and violence are right in front of me. Strife is ongoing. Conflict is escalating. This is why the law is ineffective. And justice never comes. For the wicked restrict the righteous. Therefore, justice comes out perverted. So it is not very good for you. Don't start that. It's a free tip. But chips are cool. Go ahead. I've got a little, um, a little one here. That's cool. You're making me hungry, actually. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm always hungry. <clears throat> um, all right. This is why the law is ineffective. Justice never emerges for the wicked restrict the righteous. Therefore, justice comes out perverted. Oh, I'm being, everyone's being banned from Twitter. 
I can't post on Facebook, I've been banned. That's the, that's the wicked restricting the righteous. Sure, sure, pal. Uh, it has nothing to do with the stupid stuff you've been saying. Or maybe you just can't take the world. Anyways, be that as it may. This is the prophet, a prophet of God is saying this. He's looking at his country, his land. And God, what is the point? You're not listening. You're not answering me. You're not saving. Nothing but injustice, wrongdoing, oppression, violence, conflict, strife, and the law doesn't even mean anything. Lawlessness. What did Jesus say about when we see lawlessness abound? Your heart may grow cold. Don't do that. <laughs> unless you don't want to be saved that's cool you don't want to be my child let your heart grow cold good luck we all know what that what that means right if you have a cold heart frozen solid no love there Everything just comes up perverted. Then God answers. God, why aren't you doing anything? Hello, Habakkuk, it's me, the Lord. I am doing that. Look at the nations. Look at the nations. Iron Faith Fellowship, those around the world on video. Look at the nations and observe. Be utterly astounded. For I am doing something in your days you will not believe when you hear about it. I, the Lord, am doing this. I, the Lord, look. I am raising up the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, that bitter, impetuous nation that marches across the earth's open spaces to seize territory not its own. The Chaldeans, the Babylonians, were the superpower enemy of Israel wicked to the core evil 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 and yet God is raising them up that makes no sense I thought only God was with the righteous nation as we if you read that rest of that prophet and the other prophets it's clear God uses the enemies of his people to chastise them. And he loves us, therefore he'll chastise us because he's a father. As we read this or sang this morning, he's a good, good father. He's still a good, good father when he brings the enemies through your gates and destroys your nation. Here's the thing, guys. That's lesson number one. That's the entry level 101 chastisement lesson course two is you can be part of it and fall you don't there's no guarantee that you're going to endure to the end it's not a given why did jesus say all that for no reason why did he say guard against these things why did he say guard your heart why did he say don't let your heart grow cold why did he say don't hate why did he say don't be on guard, beware, be vigilant, watch out for the devil, etc., etc., etc. I give you a billion scriptures. Why would he say it if it's not going to happen? It's going to happen. He doesn't say who it's going to happen to because it's an open question. It's an open question. Every single one of us is liable. The minute we fool ourselves and they're thinking, not I, Lord. No way that's me. I got to I got to think he's he's in heaven going. <sighs> look at the disciples. Just look what happened to Peter. Look what happened to Judas. Anyway. Yeah, but yeah, but unfairness. Yeah, but injustice. Yeah, but yeah, but, um, God, I'm doing this. Hi, I'm God. The one you're claiming to love and follow. 
I'm sending the enemies in because I'm chastising you. Yeah, but what does First John five twenty one say? Does anyone know? Little children flee from idols. I, I didn't know First John was written to pagans, and little children was about non-believers. Are you telling me Christians can have idols? <gasps> God says that. Since when is that a thing? Why are we surprised? Israel had idols right from the get-go. From the get-go. They couldn't even wait 40 days to go into idolatry. Right? You know the story, the Moses and the up to the mountain, and he's not here. All right, idol time. And who was part of it? Aaron was part of it. Aaron! Uh, what? Didn't Aaron see God too? Didn't Aaron have the direct word of God? Didn't he have the staff of Moses himself? Didn't he? Wasn't he with his brother this whole time, seeing the miracles of God and the great deliverance and the Red Sea and all that? And bang, he's into idolatry. Guys, if Aaron can fall to it, you can. I can. Uh, clearly we can. Nothing has changed. Oh, we're in the new covenant now. So? So? Since when has the Holy Spirit forced anything on us? When? Never. Never. Why does Jesus warn of things that are impossible? He wouldn't. Why would he tell us the things that we can't do? He wouldn't. If it wasn't true, I wouldn't have told you. Anyway. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but. Um, real quick, mini, 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 mini story about a dream I had the other day. A couple weeks ago, I was in a dream. I was in a giant airport, a huge giant airport, the biggest one ever. All I knew is, in the dream, I had to leave. There was a, my plane was waiting at the other gate, the other side of the airport, and I had to get there and get out. But it was really hard. It was a long way to go, and every step I took, there was another thing slowing me down, and all oh, security, security just took my bag. There it goes. What in the world? I'm gonna take forever. I gotta go now. And somebody walks up to me and says, oh, you're not gonna get to your gate till tomorrow. Tomorrow? I gotta leave today. But, oh, well, I guess, as it went on, like, oh, boy, this airport's really big. And now it's like a giant mall, like a shopping mall. There's everything's here. It's just so, boy, I'm feeling a little tired now. Maybe I'll go sit down and, um, oh, that's, that, that smells good over there. Or maybe I'll get some dinner over there and, uh, oh, let me just relax here and take a nap. In my dream, I took a nap. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, and while I was taking my nap in my dream, I was awoken by other things that we won't be talking about. Distraction after distraction after distraction. And in my dream, basically, I gave up. Guess I'm never leaving. Too hard. But all these things are so good, I might as well hang out. Mm hmm. There's a warning in that, guys. Beware the world, the flesh, and the devil. Every single one basically has the same purpose. Keep you from where God is calling you to be. Stopping you from your mission. Stopping you from leaving that airport. You will get distracted. You'll get distracted again. You'll get distracted again. You'll be distracted by Christian-y things. You'll be distracted by good things, by patriotic things. These are all idols, friends the point of idols that's what they do that's their job all right yeah but yeah but yeah but yeah but here's the best one the other side does it too Pfft. the other side does it too hypocrites I'm not going to name names or, or networks okay but you can put on your channel at 5 o'clock every night 
and see 60 straight minutes of, yeah, but they do it, those hypocrites. I didn't know that that was a spiritual gift, a spiritual calling of a Christian is to call out hypocrisy all day. Boy, I must have missed that. I'm going to need some scripture there. Newsflash, it ain't in there. It's not your job to call out hypocrites. That puts you in the judgment seat. You obey the Lord and shut up. Let the Lord deal with them. He's got really good notes. He didn't miss anything. He knows who's a hypocrite. Don't join him. Yes, I'm Joe Christian. I'm just, I go to church every Sunday. I'm here. I'm great. I'm good. I'm full of the Lord. Monday morning. Hypocrites, did you see those jerks over there? I can't believe they're like this. Like, I'm so angry again. Genesis chapter 3. What happened when Adam shifted the blame to Eve? Did it turn out well for him? I think God wants us to take responsibility for our, our own actions and our own hearts and our own sins. Don't worry about the doggone other guy. He's got that, okay? He's going to take care of that. You take care of you. That's it. Repent, confess your sin, know that you are sinning at times. I hate to tell you, we already established that, right? He who is out sin is a liar. Confess your sins to God. Repent of the sin. Repent means what? Turn away. Turn around. Opposite direction. It doesn't mean, well, I'm sorry. Let's pick it up again. Well, I'm sorry. Do it again. Well, I'm sorry. Do it again. That's repentance, right? Show your backside. Confess, repent, and follow Jesus. That's it. No more yeah buts. There's no yeah buts, okay? God, the real God, is not the God of yeah buts. He doesn't do that. He's not playing games. He's not trying to confuse you. He told you what to do already a lot of times in a lot of ways, and he showed you in your life a lot of times in a lot of ways. He's got this. He's got you. Do what he says. Behave like you're supposed to. Um, I, uh, I have a brother. I grew up in a house with me and him. It was only the two of us, but you didn't always get along, okay? Brothers do that. Even brother and sister, maybe. Sometimes that doesn't happen, right? But I know that. Now I have two sons of my own, and one's now a teenager, and they don't always get along. Aaron has two boys, can attest, okay? We get where this is going. Uh, sometimes they need to be corrected, right? Fathers need to do correction. Guess what? That's what God said. If I love you, I'm going to correct you because I'm your dad. So accept it. With, almost without exception, in my life, in my son's lives, in Aaron's son's lives, I'm sure, and whoever else, the first reaction is, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do that. You did. But that's not, I have a good reason. And once you demonstrate that, yes, in fact, you did do that, and yes, in fact, it was a bad reason, there's no reason to, whatever it is, hit your brother again. Oh, reaction two, he does it too. Did you see him do it yesterday? <laughs> that's, where, that's where I get my best feedback of the day, complaining about children. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Reaction one, denial. Reaction two, blame shift. Blame shift. I didn't do it. But they did it, so therefore, I don't know. But they did it too. Well, guys, that's your five o'clock news. I'm sorry. I, God has brought you to where you are for a purpose. He's brought the jobs, the, the, the church folks, your friends, your family, your experiences in life for a purpose. Use that for the gospel. So I'm going to not shy away, and folks may be angry and get up, and that's fine. Of my experience in the political realm, being a uh, campaign manager for a Republican Senate candidate, yes, I was. 
I was on multiple presidential campaigns. Yes, I was. I've been to debates. I know how to write ads for media. I know how to spin things. And I know BS when I see it. The church now, and I know some people, whether we were here in the room or watching at home, we are a diverse, a diverse congregation. That's very good, okay? It's very good. There's no race, nationality, creed, or anything else before Jesus, amen? We are one body of Christ, and I'm so happy that this is one of those places, because it's very rare. Yeah, praise God for that. That's for the Lord. Thank you, Lord. But also in that, uh, we get a lot of different votes. The way people vote is very different. And they look at politicians very different ways. Did you know there's a left-wing church and a right-wing church? <clears throat> just, just as bad as when you say the black church and the white church and the Hispanic church, there ain't no such thing. We know that, right? You're sitting here because you know that. There's the church, and it's made up of different parts. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Same thing. You're going to have people who think different things and are coming at it from different ways. The brothers, example, okay, of fighting and being in denial, it's happening right now. Right now. The right wing brother is a left brother and a right brother. They're both saved, you guys. God loves them both. He's called them both. That doesn't mean I can't have my opinions. I do have my opinions. And God says, you can stuff your opinions. I called you to do something. I, don't care. I know you have a preference. I'm not asking you your preference. What did, I ju what did I just found this morning and I put it out again on social because I thought it was so awesome. Get back here. This is the Lord's doing. Our wishes are of no concern. That's Genesis 24, 50. That's when a uh, parent of a young woman decided to let her go to another country and marry off and be married to Isaac. <laughs> the Lord did this. Nothing we say matters. That's what the Lord is trying to say, guys. He's bringing the enemies. Fine. He's bringing a different system of government. So what? How does that change the church's job? It doesn't. Your calling is not different at all. You, go, you think communism or socialism or Marxism matters to Jesus? It don't. It's not going to inflict anything on the gospel. Why is there a church in China? How is it possible if it mattered? How, why would it be in Iran? Iran. How would there be any Christians there if the gospel was subservient to man's governments? It's not. The Roman Empire was pretty effective at putting down other uh, threats, were they not? They love to crucify people. They love to put people in lines, to, you know, put them in the uh, arena and eat them alive. And yet, the gospel conquered the Roman Empire. And it's going to conquer whatever comes next. It doesn't matter. It's not your job to preserve a government. Get out of her. It's not your calling. I don't care what your giftings are. It's not your calling. And that doesn't mean we don't have people in the government now who know that their calling is not the government. They've been put there for such a time as this. If they're faithful and righteous that what God has told, called them to do, they will gladly step out and be an outsider, an outcast, threatened by their own people, their own party. No, it doesn't matter. They're there for the Lord. That's what we need. No matter what job you're in, no matter where God has called you or put you, these times call for us to be bold, yeah, in here, in the gospel, in our heart. Have a soft fiery heart don't just talk the talk I love the Bible I love the word of God I think this is great and all this stuff is sinful and bad boy the world sucks eh? yeah well 
look at what Pastor Hoss, and by the way, some of you and whoever else wants to go, we're going today, downtown Wilmington, right? We're going to go to the homeless, and we're going to deliver them stuff. Why? Because Jesus said so. That's, that's being a believer. We can know what it says all day long, but if we don't actually go and hand those stuff out to the poor, take care of the widows and the orphans, what are we doing? Just watch out. All right. Finally, in closing, the ringing words, as always from Pastor Manti, in closing, everyone gets excited. 1 Kings 22, we're not going to read it, don't worry. 1 Kings 22, Pastor Randy brought this up a couple weeks ago, and it was so right on. How many prophets were saying to the king of Israel, go out, yes, you are right, you go. You conquer. You, the Lord is saying, the Lord is saying through us, 400 prophets are all agreed. We're all agreed. Go, take that land. Take the city. The Lord will deliver your enemies into your hands. Thus saith the Lord. Except for one guy. Right? Micaiah. He's outnumbered 400 to 1. Just in his people. You understand? The prophets were a group, okay? We were, they knew each other. They were their own folks. They knew Micaiah, and they didn't want to bring him in because the king said, he never says anything good about me. He's always got rebukes and stuff. He disagrees. Be Micaiah, friend. I don't care if there's 400 prophets telling you one thing. If the Lord is saying that is wrong, I do not say that. I did not send them. Go to this scripture. Go to Jeremiah. Go to the book of Jeremiah. It's everywhere. What does a false prophet do? He speaks presumptuously. He says, the Lord said this when he didn't. They're prophesying out of their own heart, out of their cold heart, out of their own imagination, out of fear, a fear of being fired from their administration or from you know, their prophet job. Boy, if I don't say something good... This is why I say what I say. This is why I do what I do, because the Lord has set me up for this. And this has nothing to do with me or anybody else individually. It's fulfilling the calling that he has for you. Be serious about it. Be one out of 400. If everyone in this room took up stones, and we're not at 400 yet, in here, but if everyone said, you know what? We don't like your message today very much. We're going to stone you. Then I would be getting stoned, I guess. And there's nothing I can do about it. Nothing I want to do about it. The Lord is greater, friends, than all of this. This world is ending. This age is ending. The world will continue. The earth will abide forever with his leadership. He has gone to set it right. The day of the Lord will take care of all this. But woe to us who is not right with the Lord who desires the day of the Lord. You are not going to enjoy it, friends. It's going to break everything. Everything. Every kingdom is coming tumbling down. You know what the psalm said? I'm not going to deal with this. We're done, but... Thus saith the Lord, and this is true because it's in here. I, Jesus, will kill kings on the day of my wrath. Let that sink in. Every kingdom is coming down. That's the prescription. That's the plan. Don't bother saving anything, guys, except souls. Because that's what we're told to do. And you know in your heart of hearts, it's the right thing to do. Let everything else happen. All it's going to uh, create in you is another God, an idol that says, yeah, yeah. I know, but I have a good reason. Just following the true God. 
<clears throat> Father, we love you. Let's pray together. We submit, I want to submit to your word. We want to submit to your word. May the body of Christ say, we submit to the word of God. To know it, to learn it, to love it, because you are the author. And not the author of confusion, but of peace. To know you is to know peace, to know love. You want us to fall in love with you, the author and finisher of our faith. It's not about a book. It's not about anything except our love for you. You've set before us two choices, life and death. Choose. Choose wisely. Choose life. God, you're speaking that to us right now. Thank you for your faithful witness in Jesus' name. Amen.